people. It is Sherry Moulton back with another video. Hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you enjoyed my tic-tac-toe board for my daughter. I'm so excited. I'm giving it her to today. So she hasn't seen it just in the video. And yes, she's the mini me. She looks, <laughs> we do look alike. So that's kind of, poor girl. That's kind of funny. So anyways, today we are going to do a well-weighted, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm going to show you how to mix your resin and I'm going to show you how to clean all of your silicone cups that you use for your resin. So before we get started, if I'm going to see if you can see it. Look at the shirt my husband bought me. Is this not the funniest thing ever? I don't know if you can read it. It says, touch my coffee and I will slap you so hard, even Google won't be able <laughs> to find you and the cat this picture is hilarious i thought this was funny so i had to wear it for today's video <laughs> i thought it was cute all right so we're going to get right on into this um resin is very very toxic i'm going to start off with that um please read all of your ppe um statements when it come when you buy your resin they will have because now oh i took it up it's in my bath so now crystal resin has on the back there's new labels so yes please be mindful i choose most of the time when i come on my videos not to wear my mask and that's my choice i'm a big girl i can make that choice on my own but i please want you guys please please i can't stress it enough wear your ppe because i want you guys to be healthy so we're going to start off there so with the masks that i wear because of my glasses i wear this it's a small little one um when i purchased it it was during covid i had one before didn't like it it was during covid and you couldn't find one for the life of we couldn't find one so here in canada and home hardware had these and oh my goodness it is the best thing since sliced bread it is called the stealth um, I think I linked it last video. I will link everything that I use in the video description box. So this is called a stealth and there is little, um, oh my goodness, so you turn this and there's little um, filters that you change. And of course, everything's expensive. See, you change these little wee filters. And I, like I said, because of the glasses, I enjoy wearing this. Now, 3M makes an amazing one. It's a full garb, like it's the big old honking. So if that's what you choose, I will link one of those as well in the description box. But please, guys, I can't stress, please wear your PPE. With that, um, it is highly recommended to wear uh, nitrile gloves. And to be hilariously honest, I was at the dollar store yesterday and they had nitrile gloves. So I bought a pack and me working in the health field, blah, 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 working in the health field for 20 some years, you always go home with a pocket of gloves. Any other nurses, PSWs out there, you know what I mean? You go home with a pocket of gloves. So I ended up with this huge bag of gloves. So I've extended all of, I've used all them up, but that's what I use when I first started doing them. So now, you know, you can buy these, but make sure you wear your gloves. I will wear my gloves all the time because once you get resin on your hands, it's the worst thing to get off. So with that, I made a list. Let me get my list out. because I know me, I'm gonna forget something. So the PPE, the Stealth, the 3M and the Nitro gloves. So also, when you work with the resin, you should be in a well ventilated area. I am in my basement and I have a window over here, which sometimes is open when you hear the crickets going on. And I have a Dyson air purifier. This is the one that I have. It is also a cooling fan. So this was my first purchase, big purchase, because Dyson, to me is well over it is overpriced for what it is i um 
I paid over 500 for that. So that was my first big purchase when I started getting my YouTube money. So that is always on when I am doing my videos. Um, like I said, I can't stress enough to please be safe. So I'm going to link. I watched a video during COVID. There's a program here in Canada. It's called Marketplace. And they do different. They help people out if you're being wronged and just different things. And the one program I watched was what is the best air purifier? So I purchased this. And when I watched the end of the video, I was very disappointed. So I will link that video if I can find it because it was on YouTube in the description box and it let you know which one's which and no offense, the Dyson was I'm pretty sure last, if not second last. So that was disappointing to me, but I still use the Dyson air purifier. So with that, we're going to enough of that. Now with the resin, there is various kinds. There is a deep casting resin, which most of them are um, two to one. There is a shallow casting resin, um, which I use from crystal resin. It is a one to one. And also there is the original um, resin, which I use from crystal resin. This is the one we're going to mix up today. And it is a one to one. You have the hardener. Now, do you, I don't know if you can see, let me do this again. I'm going to stand it up and I'm going to show you how thick this gets in my basement. This is why I go up and bath, <laughs> put them in a bath. Okay. Ready? Let's go. Let's see how thick. I'm hoping that it comes through on the camera. Like it is thicker than molasses. This is like liquid. This is like, you can even hear it. This you can't hear. So that's why I take it up and I put it in a bath because this, you need it to be at a certain temperature. It needs to be 25 degrees before using Celsius. I'm in Canada. Um, so it needs to be a certain temperature. Here, let me see. What is it sitting at and why is it so thick? All right, I got my trusty dusty. Let's put it on. Let's do it. It is, it's at 23. So that's why I take it upstairs. It makes it a little more fluid. And when you're mixing it, when you have it warmed up, it doesn't create as many bubbles and it's more easier to mix. So that's why I put mine up in the bath. So with that, I'm going to, it's upstairs. So I'm going to go through the products that I use with it. And then I'm going to go up and get it. And then we're going to mix it. I enjoy mixing with these sticks. They're plastic. I get these when I get my crystal resin orders. They usually put one or two inside. So I have an abundance. <laughs> I love them. Also, um, popsicle sticks. Um, people use popsicle sticks. I hear some people say don't use them because it creates more bubbles in your resin when you're mixing. So it is what it is. So you choose and you, you use whatever works for you as well. But again, I can't stress enough. I love these things. So with that, I also use 99% alcohol. One I use to burst the bubbles. This is the stuff I get from Costco. Actually, this is the still stuff from you, Sandra. Thank you. Um, bursting the bubbles. I put it in a spray bottle and I squirt. I also use it to clean out these puppies because these puppies are a pain in the butt to clean. I love these. These are my OXO um, measuring cups. They're nice. They're thick. It's got a honeycomb design on the, on the back. They're nice. They got the nice measurements in the front. I like this big one because I can mix a big amount when I want if I need and it's easier. Um, these. I will go through cleaning because that's the second part of the video. I also use these. I got these also from Amazon. The only thing with these ones, the lines are on the inside. So it makes it sometimes you have to really scrape when you're mixing and these ones. And then I also bought these little guys. 
handy dandy. They're good for when you're using, like if you want to mix a small amount of glitters, because as, as you'll see, glitters and pigments in these, I don't like. So that's why I like to put them in this. I'll even mix in there, transfer to this to put the pigment in because it's hard to get the pigments out of that other container. So with that, so that is my mixing stuff. And these silicone little guys, they're good for app applying different things. I'm going to sneeze. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Excuse me. Holy moly. I also... A lot of people don't like you to use these, but depending on what you're doing with your resin. I use this kitchen torch. It is awesome if you're doing a top coat. It is awesome if you are doing like beach, like beach um, themed trays and stuff that's not actually in a mold. And again, you'll see me because it's just a habit that it's hard to break. I do use these sometimes in my molds, which you shouldn't do because they might burn. I've had that happen. This little guy is the same idea, but it's smaller. So I tend to use this one a little bit more now when I'm in my molds. But my son took my long neck lighter. Thanks, Steve. Um, a barbecue lighter is a good one as well to use to burst your bubbles. But trusty dusty. And, a lot, and some people don't like using this. I hear Steve doesn't like using the alcohol because it... Um, it will actually dry out your molds as well, from what I understand. But it is what it is. No matter what you do, nothing's going to be 100%. So whatever works better for you. So I do like the alcohol for the bursting the bubbles as well. And the heat gun. If you are doing those blooms that we, everyone loves to do, the flowers with the alcohol and the pigments, um, it needs to be at a certain, I like guess, kind of a temperature. I warm mine up so I don't pay attention. But your temperatures should be, this is a good thing. It, it lets you know what, what's my temp. What's my temperature? Is it saying? I'm 29 degrees. <laughs> I don't know. So anyways, so that I, it, it is what it is. My husband bought it for me. So, and tape. Tape is always good. Helps you clean out your products. If you've got stuff in here that you might need, I don't know why that, it just goes bright all of a sudden. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so the tape is awesome. And I just buy this from the dollar store. It's really, really good to help clean out things. And another product, it's not the mixing resin, but I always have a level because you need to have your stuff completely level. So that's a good thing. All right. So my resin that I use is crystal resin. They have three kinds, four kinds now, actually. So there's a, this is the, um, let me see. Oh yeah, this is the deep casting. So there's three. So you need two parts of this, one part of this. And that's the, um, the deep casting one. That's the one I used in the um, pyramid mold. They also have a, Everything's under my table. A shallow casting resin. Oh, that's... That's not it. This is it. Part A and Part B. So that is the shallow casting resin. And like you can see, it's a little thinner. And that's the thing with the... The thinner it is, um, I'm thinking the bubbles don't produce as much because that's the big thing with those two new resins from Crystal Resin is that the bubbles are less. So anyways, so that's that. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to get my resin out of its nice warm bath. We're going to come down and we're going to physically mix it. And I'll be right back, guys. I'm excited. I got my battery so my battery is never going to run out anymore. It's a permanent, it's a plug-in one. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, I'll see you in a minute, guys. Maybe. <laughs> that button doesn't work half the time. Hi, we are back. So with today, at the end of the project, we're going to do this. I bought this cute little mold. It's a dish. So we're going to make that. I measured it out. I took water and I poured it in. 
on oh, this way sorry poured it all in and I'm pretty sure it was six ounces that I need for this so I'm mixing up six ounces I'm using this cup because I'm going to add pigment and glitter to it okay and when I mix again like I said I put these upstairs these ones call for five minutes to mix they highly suggest that you use it between and I go we're living in Canada we go between um Fahrenheit and Celsius so I apologize the other container told you it was in Celsius this one is telling me in Fahrenheit so it is the temperature you should be using it is 75 to 80 degrees once it goes below 70 degrees it is harder and it makes more bubbles when you mix so you should have it climatized that's why I put it in a bath so there's always a part one which is the resin most of them a part two which is the hardener you can see how thin the hardener is compared to how thick the resin is I always pour my hardener in first because that allows you to mix it better which is um, ideal because it makes it harder to mix I have an issue with seeing because I don't know Sherry's has a hard time seeing I tend to this is my camera my phone sorry let me just get it going I apologize I tend to um, put my flashlight on <laughs> my flashlight I set it up against my like this so I can see the lines oops and I want this side it's hilarious I'm in Canada I when I grew up I was in grade seven I think when they started flipping over to the metric system I don't know I'm 55 and I'm still using both so when I mix I need six ounces so I'm actually I'm gonna make up eight and then there's something else I can use when you mix when you're looking at these measurements bring it to eye level so come down or bring up your product so that it's eye level so you can make sure you're seeing it so I always put it on that's why I like this little this is just a board normally I have a cutting board I like it because I can bring my product up to me so now I'm looking in and I am going to put four ounces of this one and we are there I always use I didn't show you I use these a lot of people use baby wipes but this is what I have it is just a wet one I call them a wet one <laughs> back in the day and I always take it I wipe off my bottle as I'm doing it because it you don't you don't want to make a mess put my lid back on and then you're not contaminating your resin for the next time now I'm getting out the part one the resin actual resin and I'm gonna get down eye level again and I'm gonna bring it up to four ounces and you can see the difference how thick this is and when you get to the end I would start lifting it up and that way you don't put more than what you want in here and there we go and these are heavy there we go sometimes I'll just do that and again wipe off my container so you're not contaminating the next time all right there we go guys now the fun begins mixing 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 I'm using my stir stick I'm gonna put that in there I'm gonna turn off my camera my light and I take a look at my clock on here so I'm the really nerd it is 5 31 a.m. so mix for five minutes so I'm gonna mix and I will be back actually we'll mix together so it's 556 oh see that's weird 656 
I always go scrape the sides and go slow and slow. This is a mixing video, so I'm gonna we'll do it the whole time. I just stir and stir. Make sure you get the bottom. And this is why it's nice to put the thinner one on the bottom because it's easier to incorporate it. You want to make sure you do the sides and you want to scrape down every once in a while. Get that stick and then scrape the sides. And we do this for five minutes. So while I'm mixing this, we can um, talk about putting stuff in it. When you mix your resin, you can add um, pigments, mica powders, you can add acrylic paints, you can add um, glitters, you can add pigment pastes, you can add alcohol ink, you can add, there are color tints for resin. There is so many things that you can put in this, guys. You can put just about anything. Now, when you're mixing in anything that is liquid, anything that is liquid, I'm going to state that, you should not put more than 10%. Like, I have put in a whole cup of sand and put a drop of resin in it to make a paste that is different than putting in a half a cup of alcohol ink or, or whatever and so you're di you're you're lessening the consistency of your resin and that will affect the curing time but again if it's just pigment powders or glitters you can put whatever amount you want in it without affecting it that's why you see when they do those blooms that a lot of people put a lot of bit of little wee bit of resin with like a half a cup, like a whole cup of glitter just to make a paste so your glitter doesn't float. Um, what else can I tell you while we're mixing? Uh, I think that's about it. Now there are bubbles, guys. There are bubbles, see? Just mix away. Scrape. So, now I'm, the big question is, what colors do I put in this? So we're just gonna, this is kind of cool. I was seeing these before. Oh, I got something in this one. I'd seen these and I was excited to try. So I don't know if I want it to be transparent. I can put some alcohol ink in it with some glitters or to put like a solid paste. So there's, all right, all these are right beside me because these are what I used in my daughter's tic-tac-toe board. I bought these from Amazon. These are all black diamond pigments. Um, I have pigment kits that I've gotten from Crystal Resin. Same idea. I have um, pigment pastes. These are from Crystal Resin. I also have the amazing Lores pigment pastes. Um, it's just endless what you can put in here. Um, like I said, I've got Laura's pigment powders, all kinds of things. Clicking my, oh, so we've got four minutes gone. One more minute. And then we'll add some glitters and some pigments. Oh, do I put, I'm thinking alcohol ink. And actually, no, 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 no. Okay, this was, we're going to do this. This is a Lores. This is a, a transparent liquid pigment, and it's called True Blue. We'll put that in. 
and we'll put some of Laura's glitters. The only thing is, when you put the glitters in, I know 100%, they're probably going to go all to the bottom. Um, I think this one will be pretty. Let me just finish stirring this here. All right, we've hit it. So we've hit five minutes. You can see there's bubbles, but that's... So I'm going to do one final last scrape. And there we go. I'm going to find a blue glitter. Let me just take a peek here. And yes, I'm or unorganized. It is what it is, guys. Um, my issue is I have too many. Too many! Oh, there we go, sky blue. I think we might use sky blue or this one is Persian blue or I have diamond teal. So we're going to put this back. We're going to put these back and we are going to get right on into this. All right. So, and a lot of times you don't need a lot. I tend to over put in my pigment, like especially, <laughs> especially the mica powders. I tend to put more than what you need. So let's see. Oh my goodness. This is one of those. There we go. An eyedropper. So you squeeze it and it'll bring it in. And let's just Oh it isn't. It's that's weird. Let's just give it a stir and see how it looks. Oh, I think that is, oh, that goes a long way. I don't think I've ever used this, actually. I may have used it once. Oh, there we go. That's good. So it is transparent. You want to make sure, give it a stir, make sure it's all incorporated. And you've seen, I put maybe six drops, seven drops in there at the most. I'm bad. I still use it. Oh, this one's, this one is Lorez. It is true blue. And this one came actually from um, Michelle from Artworks Resin Canada. But Laura has it as well um, from Laura's Art Corner. And there we go. So let's see which glitter will look the best. Oh, I'm thinking this one. Let me do this. Yeah, no. Made an executive decision, guys. We're going to use the sky, Chunky Sky Blue. And I have glitter everywhere. As always, I like to use these little wee spoons to put them in. I got these from Amazon when I ordered dessert cups when I was playing around with um, Fiona's flowers. And be, me being me, I'm putting a whole scoop in there. And again, with this glitter, you can put as much of it as you want. I'm going to put lid on because I will have it everywhere. Oh, this goes everywhere. Here, let me just... And this is why I don't like putting the glitter in those other cups because it sticks. Look at that. That is stupendously beautiful. Okay. So we're going to pour this in here. I'm going to take off this. Actually, I'm going to get a wet one out. So now you know when I say a wet one, I'm using, like I said, I just use what I have here. Um... I was a big Lysol wipes girl before before uh, COVID hit, so I always have Lysol wipes. All right, so I'm going to set that there. We're going to pour. I'm going to pour on the top of this so it, it does not produce as much bubbles 
when you move it around, move it around, move it around, sometimes you create bubbles. Now I'm not going to fill it right to the top because I want to do a little squidgy widgy, <laughs> as Steve would say. I've got, there's a little bit of fluffy duffies in there, so I'm going to take some of my tape and just not worried about the glitter because the glitter's going in there anyway. And there we go. Everything's sticking to me. And there we go. So this one, I'm going to just kind of, I just want to make sure that it's all the way in there. Now the only thing is guys, because today is Friday, this is Friday's video, and it's Friday. You're not going to see this at the end of the video, and I apologize. But today's video was just showing you how to mix and how to clean, okay? So I'm going to top this up. Perfect. And I have a little bit left. I always use it for, well, let's see. We've got this heart kicking around here because I, in the video, I show you how to clean the heart in the end. We'll put that and we will mix. This one's my favorite, the offset puffy heart. And this one. And these make awesome fridge magnets here and then scrape out your containers really really you want to get all of that perfect now this is what I do because you don't want to leave this I always right now wipe it off with the wet one baby wipe whatever you want to use and it's done okay and then you don't have to worry about it hardening on you because those are done those aren't silicone they're plastic so i was devastated i'm just going to wipe off this i was devastated thinking i i ruined them all but i didn't you can clean them i showed you how to clean them and then with this um because these ones are just as easy to clean i always put the wet one that i just wiped I get out all of what I can and like that glitter, that glitter is retardedly, oh, sorry, wrong word. But anyways, sometimes it's better with these ones just to leave it pure and that's that. So I'm going to get out my, now that my hands are dirty, I'm going to use my 99% alcohol to burst some bubbles in here. It's always better to get it going. It's half empty, it's almost empty. Oh my goodness. There we go. Perfect. All right guys, so I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna take off my gloves right now just because that one glove is obviously very messy. This I'm gonna stick underneath my little thing and I am going to get Another product that I would highly, highly suggest, you can use a, um, like a big box, like a big Tupperware container, and you could put it over top, depending what you use. I have pizza boxes that I use to ship stuff. 
Um, you can put it inside a pizza box, cover it up. That's another way to do it. I tend to use these little... Um, one. Of course, I'm getting all the big ones. Here's a brand new one. So these are my tents. Oh, here we go. This is the one Sander bought me. It's got the pretty little flowers. So these are food tents. Right now is a good time to get them because they're still in the dollar store. And I cover like that. And you get no, for me, you get no flies and you get no dust particles. Because down here in my basement, I've always got little fluffies that end up in my, uh, and I see some bubbles. So let's get um, little, one more squirt. You see, I don't know if you can see, but it just instantaneously bursts. And depending what you're doing with it, if you're layering different layers, do not use a lot of this. I personally wouldn't use it if you're going to do like a pyramid because you will get, it looks like an oily residue. That happens when you use too much alcohol ink. And anyways, okay, so I'm going to let this cure, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Um, next, you're going to be at my trailer at the kitchen sink. And I'm going to show you how to clean all of your products. So I'll see you guys in the flash of a second at my trailer. See you guys in a bit. Hello everybody. I know I've already done part one, but this is part two. I'm going to show you how to clean all of your amazing um, cups that you use with your resin. And I just got to throw in my trailer cup. Hello, blinged out. So anyways, so yeah, so this is part two. Sorry, I'm at my trailer and we're going to get into showing you how to clean all of your um, silicone, I was going to say mugs, your silicone cups that you use for mixing your resin. So with that, I'm going to get some hot, hot water into my sink with some soap and we're going to show you how to turn these inside out. And with that, I'll be right back, guys. I'll just be a second. Okay, I am back. I have my sink filled with water, hot, hot, hot as you can get. And I just put some of my just dishwashing soap. Doesn't have to be palm olive, it could be whatever you use. I am gonna put that in there. And what I'm gonna do, first of all, is put these guys in there right now because these guys, I'm just gonna scrape out what I can and I'm gonna put it in a plastic bag because we're gonna keep all of that. And these ones I find hard because you can't flip these inside out. So I'm gonna try and get what I can. And then we're gonna put those in there and let it soak. I find this hard, my hands are so bad. Cause I, so I'm just gonna scrape what I can. And then I'm just dumping it in and let it soak. These little ones, there's not much on them, but it's just clear, whoops, sorry, clear, but you can still, you don't want that going into your new, the new resin that you're gonna make. So that's going in, cause I find these ones are so hard to clean. So this is why I, I love these ones cause they're amazing, but I will tend to, oh, it's all on the outside. I will tend to um, wipe them out as soon as I use them. So you might see me do that in my videos. So I got two more of those ones and we're gonna put those in. Just kind of break off what you can. Sometimes it doesn't really work. And then this big guy, he is actually clean. But I'm gonna put him in there anyway, just to get it. And then we'll clean all those. So with these ones, I got a garbage bag here. I'm putting all of my catchings in it. So these ones, you just kinda, I let them cure because on these ones, they're easier. You just take your little thing, you pull it out, and there you go. And these ones, you can flip inside out and shake off. Here, let me move this here this way. Shake off anything into this bag. And then you can either use a wet one 
I don't have wet ones here. Wet ones, listen to me. I'm gonna use these. This might not be what you wanna use, but that's what I have on hand at my trailer. So, as far as cleaning these ones, if you don't want to put them in soapy water, there you go, done. That one's cleaned. Pop it back inside out, and there you go. But I always put mine in the sink, so I'm gonna set them aside, and then we're gonna clean these ones first, but I'm just gonna proceed, we'll do the rest. Pop these out really quick, turn them inside out, and that's it. Easy, easy, easy. Just give it a wipe off. And then pop it back in. Actually, you know, when I, to put them in the water, I'm gonna leave them the other way so that I'm making sure I get the inside cleaned. So I'm gonna pop them all. Same with these little guys. You can, depending on what you use, I find sometimes the UV resin, you have to put these underneath and cure them so that it does come clean. And other ones, there, see this one just popped inside out. Clean, give it a wipe. That's why these little silicone ones are amazing because they're easy to oops easy to clean and the same with your mold like my silicone mold there's stuff in it so let it cure and then just give it a wipe out you can use um the 99 percent alcohol to wipe it out but you don't have to go that with the expense you can just do this throw it in soapy water once in a while and then it is clean. There. So I'll put that in the water as well. Let's just do a big one and then I will proceed and pull all of these out and show you how I wash these because I want to leave these guys soak for a little bit. There, let's get this. And these you can use in other things. This reminds me if you could put that at the bottom of the ocean and then you've got your little swirlies, that would be cool. Like, look at this one, like coral. That would be kind of cool. And this one's got glitter. Glitter is nice, but glitter is a pain to clean out. So I'm gonna flip this one. And these ones are hard. Oh, I feel bad because I've had Four surgeries on my hands and oh, they're not the best when it comes to strength. There we go. Pop that out. So I'm going to proceed. I'm going to put you on pause. I will do the rest of these. That I'm just going to leave. It'll come off in the water. Yeah, so I'm going to flip those out and I'll be back when we get into the sink and I'll show you how to clean these ones. I'll be right back guys my button works okay I am back so I've turned these all inside out they're sitting on the edge of my counter and I'm gonna deal with these in here this is what I love about my trailer <clears throat> my sinks have these covers so you can hide the dishes <laughs> so with that we're gonna get into here ignore my stains I can't get these out of there I don't know guys so with this, all I do is take my hand and I am scrape, scrape, scrape. This is the pigment from my video the other day. That's why I don't like to put pigments in here. And I do not like to put um, glitter in these ones because they're so hard to clean. Let me get into this one here first. This one is good. It is pretty clean. I'm scraping my nails along just to get any of the little bits that are in there. This one was pretty clean before I started. So that one's good. So I'm just going to rinse it off and we're done. I tend to try to do it with this hot, like I said, my sink at home, the water is like horrendously hot. 
Okay. So this is, again, we're just trying to scrape them. And it's hard. It takes forever. And I, like I said, I do this. Let me bring in a little more. I try to do this like once a month. I'll wipe out as what I can as I'm doing the video. And then I will bring them up to my sink and clean out what I can. And the outside is a pain because it's got all these little honeycomb little honeycomb design and it's such a such a pain now be mindful when you are draining your sink because you do not want the little bits of resin to go down your drain so remember to leave your little catcher in there so that you catch all of that that stuff like it's coming off this stuff is clear so I'm not sure if it's showing up but it is coming off and I'm scraping. You could use a, a scouring pad if you want. But this is it, guys. It is a pain. So that's why I mentioned to, to do that as I wipe as I go. I think that's about it. Oh, there's a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'll leave these because that's all I do. I just, I'll put one down and then I'll put it back in. That one there, these little guys. I threw my sticks in there as well. See, they're coming right off. I don't know if you're seeing that, but it just scrapes right off. And I'm not too worried about the outside. I just want to make sure the rim is clean so that when I do my resin, I'm not getting any anything inside my new batch of resin because you don't want to any goopies in there because that's not good. There we go. This one is clean, my friends. Two down. So now with these guys, we'll just skip right to. So with these guys, I throw them in as well. And they are basically clean, like especially this glitter one. Let's get in here and we will. I like these as well, but the lines are on the inside of the mold, which is kind of a, a pain. It makes it hard to get, to, I feel if you're mixing, it might affect your mixing, but maybe I'm not, I'm wrong. You never know. There we go, clean as a whistle. And I'm gonna just make sure the outside is good as well. And I always rinse them off so you don't want soap left on them. And I will show you how to do the mold. The mold's the same way. These silicone molds are nice. And every once in a while, you need to do a good wash with them. Just make sure you're not scraping the inside. Even my fingernail is going to scrape the inside and you'll leave a mark. So I'm just trying to go. And again, you always want to rinse it because there's little bits of resin left in that water, right? So I'm going to rinse them off. Good. And I dry them like this, and that way they're easier to, whoops, I dry them inside out with these guys. There we go. Oh, we got some glitter. How did glitter get on there, eh? On the outside. Go figure. Let me just turn that water off. Let me just do this. So if you're gonna do it you might as well do it all the way right this side of this part I don't care about scraping with my fingernail so there you go guys so that's how I clean these I'm going to you can use paper towel I've got a towel over here and that's all I use let me just grab my big old towel 
I'm at my trailer, so I've got this big bath towel. <laughs> so that's all I do. I take my towel, I dry these out, and we're good for the next resin project. So with that, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this part of the video, how to clean your resin um, cups, your silicone cups, and all that good stuff. Let me just see, because I did throw two things in here. Um, my stir sticks as well. These are plastic. Um, so I always try to wipe these off, as you see in every video, because, again, it's hard to get... I thought I ruined these before. I was so upset because I love these sticks. These are the ones that I um, receive from Crystal Resin when I get my resin orders. So yeah, just take your finger, scrape along the edge. I don't know if you're seeing it coming off. But again, like I said, the biggest part is try to get the water as hot as you can. I wouldn't put boiling water in there, but you, you need it to be hot. Are warm anyways so there you go with that my friends let me just see how this one is doing with the uh, with all of my pigments there see it's coming off it's just a process that you just got to keep scraping and scraping and scraping so I will not bore you with all of that and I'm gonna keep doing this and I'll show you them all clean at the end. So with that, I'll see you from home with the next part of the video. See you in a bit, guys. The button. Okay, 10 minutes later, that pigment and glitter is all out. I had to scrape with my finger all the way. So that's why I don't like using them in here. Anyways, I'll see you in a bit, guys. Just wanted to show you it came clean. Well, there you have it, guys. My long overdue how to mix and how to clean resin products and all that fun stuff. And I know I probably missed something. Something isn't in there, but I hope it helps somebody out. I hope you enjoyed the video and please don't be afraid of resin. It is fun. It is, as long as you wear your PPE, that's the biggest thing I can say is please be protective of yourself because you only have one of you and you're all special. So anyways, with that, in the description box, I have the links to everything that I showed you today. And also I have the links to my amazing supporters, my, um, all of my, dis oh my goodness, I, I'm all tongue tied. Can you tell I'm only had one coffee? Um, all of my, um, amazing uh, discount codes and everything are in my description box. I'm not going to go through it all today. But with that being said, love you guys all. Hope you have an amazing, amazing weekend. And I hope it was helpful for some people. I'll see you later, guys. Love you. Let's see if the button works.